it's going down, y'all. Come the worst, my people, come first. You know the deal. When worst come, the worst come, the worst come, the worst. When worst come, the worst, my people, come first. When worst come, the worst. When worst come, the worst. Hi. Welcome to the third episode of the 800 pound Agile Gorilla. I'm Jem Jalal. I'm Tobias Mayer. And this week, what are we talking about? Um, we're going to talk about motivation today. So a, a common question that we have from new Scrum Masters or sometimes experienced Scrum Masters is, how do I motivate my teams? Mm. So what do you think about that? Mm. How would you respond to that question? Uh, for me personally, it's certainly something that I've been asked to do when I've had a job. So Jim, why are you joining us? We need you to motivate the guys. Um, they're a bit stale or you know, you've got to bring them to life. So what do you, what do, you do? How do you respond to that? I think um, I've always said that there's no such thing as like, you know, agile fairy dust that I'm going to sprinkle over the team. <laughs> so... Which there was. No, we too, man. <laughs> but I do think that you can motivate though. As in, I think I motivate. What do you think of that word? I think it's like to move people. Yeah, I, I mean, it's based in the root of just a motive, isn't it? What is your motive? Mm. You give someone a motive. Um, but, you know, it's the funny thing is I don't remember really coming across that word in a work context or really any context until I started doing Agile. Mm. And now you hear it all the time. Uh, as if um, yeah. people were previously motivated before they were doing Agile by people shouting at them and telling them what to do or whatever it was or, or you know, a bonus scheme, which of course we still have. Yeah. Um, but suddenly it's like this idea of, it's like, it's like the question, how do I get my teams to self-organize? Yeah. It's a similar sort of question really, um, uh, as right, if it's right. in your control somehow. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm with you, just, just to touch on that, I don't think you make anyone self-organize. You yeah. might move out of the way to let them do it. Yeah, that might be the best thing, mightn't it? Yeah. yeah people are, groups are naturally self-organizing and we can certainly prevent it. And I think it's, it was the same with motivation in a way. It's, um, People are naturally motivated when they have a desire to do something. Mm. And so if you, they don't have the desire, they don't have a sense of purpose or uh, an enjoyment in what they do, then you have to artificially motivate them. Mm. And so that's, that's the really the deeper question, isn't it? Is how do we create, really, is how do we create the environment where I don't need to motivate people? Mm. That would be much more interesting than how do I motivate them. Now, of course, there's loads of ways you can motivate people. You can whoop them up, you have little parties and mm. beer on a Friday and, you mm. know, good bonus schemes and all those things will, right, right. in the short term, get people to work a little harder maybe or get excited about what they do, but it's all short-lived. Mm. So, you know, this kind of reminds me of, you know, that Dan Pink's work drive, yeah. extrinsic, intrinsic motivators. Right. So, yeah, look, right, if you've got an espresso machine and there's table tennis, so you're getting trips away together with your team, that could excite you. It wouldn't excite me personally, no? I have to say, yeah. I don't really? get excited by those things. The yeah. espresso I, one? Yeah, well, maybe the espresso, but, um, you know, work outings and things, I want to stay as far away from those things as possible. Right. right. Um, but, you know, it's so different people have, have different needs that sometimes it might be met. But in the video you're referring to, Dan Pink's Puzzle of Motivation, Yes. he talks about the three things that will intrinsically motivate people, and there's autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Right. Um, so again, you could ask, well, does someone give you autonomy? Do they give you mastery, and do they give you purpose? Or are those things that come from within? Yes. Can, can you stimulate that in people? I think you can create an environment that it stimulates the people. Okay. Um, is, you know, if you think about human beings as plants, I mean, we're not, obviously, but we don't motivate plants. We create environments where the plant can thrive and do its best. And it's a little bit like that, I think. It's, there's a, there's a, the idea of creating a, a place where people can excel and not a place where they're blocked, which is, tends to be what many work environments are, with all the procedures and processes and rules in place. Do you think though, just the plants, well, I, I, I get part of it, but the other part of me thinks, well, so many people are motivated by paying the mortgage, by being able to, you know, just having security. Sure. So. But should that be a motivator or should that just be a given? I mean, if we're working, we should be paid a fair wage for what we do. Absolutely. I mean, that's another thing Dan Ping says in that video is get money off the table so right from the start. Yeah, yeah don't have yeah. conversations about bonuses and rewards. Right, right. Uh, so rewards you, don't work. So you see that as just like the extrinsic stuff you're saying, it's a given that people should be rewarded appropriately. Yeah. 
but the more meaningful stuff is the intrinsic. So the question then is, as Scrum Masters, can't you unlock the intrinsic motivation of a person? You might be able to. You might be able to. I don't know. But, you know, if someone's, if I was a manager of, uh, and someone came to me and said, I need motivation, I would be very wary of having that person on my team. I want people who come um, either motivated to do the work, that's why they're joining, or um, they find it within themselves to, to excel. If they're looking outside of themselves for someone to motivate them, I don't really want those people to work with me. Um, and so maybe, you know, as a manager, I might say, okay, well, you're fired. That will motivate you. It will motivate you to go and get another job and actually, you know, find it in yourself to be motivated so you don't have to be relying on someone else. I hear that, but you know what? Let, let me just, let, let's, let's just take this to the cold face, right? So imagine you, uh, I joined as a scrum master in, say, a gig three, four years ago. And the first thing that I observed was, what they called user stories weren't user stories. They were basically very technical tasks. A mm-hmm. lot of the developers didn't really know how their work connected to the big picture. Right. So what I'm getting at is some of these guys were demotivated because they weren't using a practice to the best of its ability. So once people started to see how their work connects to a bigger picture, it, I felt it created some level of inspiration. And so- As it would. Yeah, right, and I th- I'm not sure that, you know, when you, you know you join a place to just say, you guys, if you're not motivated, it's not gonna work here. No, you're but right. I, I know you're what you're right. saying, yeah. right? But yeah. is that really gonna uh, work? Um, it, it isn't, but uh, where's the focus then? Is the focus on trying to get that person to enjoy his technical tasks and be motivated by them? Or, it's not, right? But it, or is the, is the opportunity to create a system mm. or, um, yeah, a system or an environment where those people can actually be excited by what they do. As you said, see the bigger picture, have a right. sense of purpose. So your focus, I think, as a, as a Scrum Master in that situation would be to improve the system mm. so that people can find it in themselves to be excited about what they do. But that's not motivating a person. Motivation is about, a Yeah, different. well, we were talking about, about teams and th- th- this phrase that people often use um, when they're disappointed in someone, they say, he's not a team player. Right. Which essentially means you're not complying to what I tell you to do. That's usually what it means. Um, as if like somehow by becoming a team player, you're going to be motivated. And you know, so, so there's, there's all this language that we use in organizations that uh, is almost like double speak in a way, isn't it? Mm. You know, so I, I'm always cautious of that stuff. I mean, if you think about well, let's take modern agile. Let's talk about modern agile for a minute, yeah. which which is has got contains some very very good ideas uh, indeed, yeah, I did. and it's certainly worth looking into if you've never heard of it before. But it has this one principle that sticks in my throat, and it's make people awesome, um, which which also sort of comes with the implication that people are not already awesome, that the people you're working with are not awesome, and it's your job to make them awesome. Mm. It sounds very violent. Um, and it's the same idea of let, you have to motivate my team. There's a violence inherent in that. Why, why do you? Why, why do people have to be motivated all the time? What we're really seeking, I think, it's, it's similar to people have to be happy at work. You know, that, right, that right. jars with me. No, they don't. Um, people, what you need is engagement. You need people to care about what they do and to have a sense of purpose about mm. it and to want to do it. And most people, when they get a job, they want to do the job, right? That's why they, that's why they apply. They want to do it. They want to do it well. Um, but a lot of the systems we have prevent that happening. I feel like if I'm going to an interview and somebody is saying, we want you as a scrum master to do all these, these great things. Oh, and by the way, the guys need to be motivated. They need to be energized. Can right. you help with that? You know, what, what can we pass on to people that would get that in an interview? Well, there's two things really, I suppose. One, one is um, to, be, to begin engaging in a conversation about um, what that person means when he says that, he or she says that. Yeah. You know, tell me more about that motivation or what kind of motivation is that motivation? What does it look like? Yeah, right. what right. does it look like? Right. Um, and, and for yourself and for myself, I, I need to ask myself the question, why do I want to motivate other people? What is it that drives me to try and motivate someone else? It's usually... Uh, around some form of compliance, some form of getting people to do what you want them to do rather than what they feel they need to do. And the same would come in if I was attempting to motivate um, one of my daughters to play a particular way or do something. It's usually about my needs, not their needs. 
And I, and I think that's the question that we can stop as scrum masters or anyone in that role. We can stop and say, why am I feeling this need to motivate someone else? What is it that I'm seeking? Isn't that part of the job for some people? In other words, hey, I brought you in as a scrum master because I want the team to be more effective. And if they're more motivated, they can be more effective. And so it's, it's true, right? It becomes one of your needs, but isn't this in many ways why you've been brought in? To if you went to those people on the team and say, um, I hear you're demotivated and I'm here to motivate you, how do you think that would be received? I think pe- many people would be patronised. I want to take a few steps back because you said something interesting. You were like, whether it's, you know, you spoke about the make awesome part or people have to be happy at work. You know, do, people, do you think people assume that you have to do these things like be motivated and be happy to be engaged? No. I can be quite miserable and be engaged if what I'm doing matters. If it's important to someone or, or some greater cause. That's interesting. It doesn't, I don't have to sit there with a big grin on my face. In fact, people look at me sometimes when I'm working and say, why are you so miserable? Um, I don't feel miserable I don't feel happy I just feel focused okay you know, so well, that's what we seek isn't it mm. maybe that would be an interesting question how do I help people become more focused well, give, them, more happy. give them something to focus on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you know just thinking about this I, I'm not sure that um, it actually matters whether you say are you mo- can you motivate people can you inspire people I think it matters more to understand what people mean by it when they ask that of you so let's talk about the needs of the person making the request. Okay. And that person might be yourself. You might be saying, how do I motivate these people? They seem demotivated. Uh, and I think that you know, a manager or you know, an executive might say to you, I'm bringing you in to motivate my team. Mm. So how would you respond? I think you know, this comes back to what we said before. What do they mean by motivate their people? What is it that you know, he or she needs or thinks that the team needs? That, that's where I'd want to start with. Right. So in terms of, I don't know... So it's the need, we're looking at now really the need of the person. Yeah, I kind of want to blast past the word motivate. Like, what's up? What's, you know, what do you think is wrong? Where, where do you think I can bring value? You know, what, what is the actual challenge that you believe that the team are having? Rather than get, you know, hung up on the actual word of come in and motivate. I'm just going to right. reiterate, I'm not going to, you know, one thing I always I want to say is I manage expectations. There's, there's nothing that I can do to get you excited. Only you can get yourself excited about coming to work. So I'm just, that, that's just for yes. me. That's one of, yes. one of my kind of upfront disclaimers. Yeah. I can't excite anybody. You can excite yourself. Yeah. I can point some things out, but I certainly can't do it for you. Right. Well, where would you go with it? In a similar place, I think. It's, um, let's take, you know, I would, I would want to take a look at uh, the purpose of the organization what it is we're building why we're building it who we're building it for if people understand the big picture a lot of the why are we giving the information mm. yeah, a lot of the why yeah do people you know if people are just coming in and being assigned tasks and told to do them they they might be motivated at first because they like doing what they're doing but after a while they're going to get lost and bored mm. with that so um, it, again it comes back to a, a creation of the environment or a nurturing of the environment mm. you know, let's make sure that Let's make sure that we're doing our best on our end. You know, mm. we're creating this um, sense of purpose for people. We'll certainly do that. But then, of course, yeah. each individual has to have their own purpose too. It's not mm. enough just to have some wonderful big vision statement or something. We, we need to be connected, right? Right, right. But I guess for me, I'd, I'd want, if you're going to work, wouldn't you want that team purpose to be. Um, I don't know if more important than your own individual purpose. If we were working, in a, if it's in a team way of working, yeah. like you can't remove somebody's ego, but I'd rather there be a, a team ego that drives the way that people work rather than there being an individual yeah, one. It certainly tends to work better that way, yeah. We don't, we don't throw away our own sense of purpose, but no. um, you know, I, I think, again, go back to Dan Pink, he said um, purpose is a desire to do something in the service of something greater than yourself. Nice. Um, I like that, yeah, mm. and, and that can be many things at many levels, mm. but it's something greater than yourself. If you're only in it for your own, to meet your own needs, you're probably going to work in a selfish way, in a competitive way even, perhaps. Do you, do you think he's describing, I mean, he calls it intrinsic motivation, doesn't he, when mm. he speaks about so, yeah. purpose? Yeah. But, you know, again, maybe we've gone past that point whereby 
the words don't actually matter. It's understanding what that person um, means by that word yeah. and what needs that they feel that they need to have met. That's right. more important. Yeah. Is there a little bit of a theme here though? You know, we're talking about, you said make people awesome or self-organization or motivation. It's the idea or the belief that one has, which is that people are these things already. People can self-organize. Well, that's a, that's a good starting point, isn't it? That people are that way already and somehow they've lost it or we've taken it away from them or they arrived here without it. Um, but if we start off with the, if you want to make assumptions at all, let's assume that people are all those things. They are motivated. They do have a sense of purpose. They want to do well. It's basic theory why management from the 70s or right, 60s, right. isn't it? Mm. Um, people are naturally inclined to do well in a work environment or in any work environment. So this is something which is quite important in terms of a belief that you may or may not hold as a scrum master. Mm. Like, do you believe that people turn up with positive intent? Do you believe that people turn up to do their best? And maybe if you don't, you may focus more on extrinsic motivation. Yeah. You may throw more money at them. Yeah. Um, who knows? Well, the money thing is a hard, the rewards and, uh, well, I say rewards and punishment system we have, because if you don't get the reward, that's the punishment, right? <laughs> um, but that's so ingrained in corporate culture at the moment, it's very hard to shake off. Uh, and people try and work around it by saying, well, let's not have individual rewards, let's have team rewards. But you're not solving the problem that way. Um, rewards, as, as, uh, as is known from years of research, do not make people more creative. They don't produce better results. They produce, in fact, worse results. I mean, this is just so well known now. By rewarding? By rewarding people, yeah, because they focus on their reward and they, and they, they don't look to the periphery. Mm. They look straight ahead. I mean, this is illustrated perfectly in that same video we've been talking about a lot. Yeah. Um, so, can people be motivated? Can they? Perhaps. Do you feel motivated? I feel motivated enough to be here. Yeah, what motivated you to make these videos? Um, I think the opportunity for us to have a, have a conversation. Yeah. The opportunity to, to hear from others about if what we're talking about is or isn't useful. But no one pushed you into do it, did they? No. No one said, I'm going to motivate no. Jen to come and make a video. No. You said to me, do you want to make some videos? And I thought, yeah, I like hanging out with Jen. I like talking with him. Let's film it and see what happens. You know? So people do things because they want to do them. Right. Until right. you take away that desire. You know, if you made this so complicated and you had a rigid timetable I had to adhere to in order to come and make these videos with you, had particular locations that were difficult for me to get to, you could have very quickly stopped me wanting to do this. But because we've kept it light and open and easy, yep. um, it happens. So you, what I'm hearing is <laughs> I could have very easily demotivated you. Absolutely, you could have done, yeah. yeah, yeah. You still could if you wanted. I'm trying. <laughs> so it's just an example, isn't it, really? Like, um, Let's first of all, before we try and motivate people, let's figure out how we're demotivating mm. them and stop doing that. Stop the demotivation and then see if we still need to motivate people and maybe we don't. It's a pretty cool conclusion. All right, will that do? Yeah, I think so. A wrap? Yeah, I think, thanks for watching. Um, and as always, we welcome your feedback, good, bad, or whatever, let us know. Thank bad you. Bad or ugly. Yeah, we're open to it. Yeah, thanks for watching.